Good afternoon and welcome to Die Dragon Die Presents Legends Campaign Episode 75. I'm your DM and host Marty, joined by Adam and Ahmed. Mark is on his way, I think. I don't know. We haven't heard it from him. So is Ahmed. He's a couch right now. Ahmed is a couch. He's not anymore. Awesome. All right. Good stuff. Woo. Good stuff. How was everyone's week? I'm feeling much never better than yesterday. That again. Um, <laughs> Although I couldn't sleep, I was up till like five a.m. after the after we we done done did the playing. Mark yeah, crashed yeah. his forklift. Uh, <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> so show good. him show him the uh... Uh, the uh, the gif. Yeah, I'll look that up while you guys are talking about your your week. So. <laughs> Uh, we played uh, awesome. got to play D and D again in the week. Uh, we played some of the um, Dominion. That was good. And when I play as a player, after the session, you I just shut like I, I sleep. I can fall asleep, and it's just like weird dreams. When I play as the DM, I can't sleep. It's it's I need to solve all the all you're left with is all the stuff you need to have figured out before the next session, and you don't really sleep until you figure it out. <laughs> I, I So, when we end game, it's like 3 a.m. for you guys, it's midnight for me, but yeah, I'm up for the next three hours. Yeah. Um, uh, either watching movies or just trying to get caffeine in my system. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yep. On, on, the, on the weekdays, or right now my wife's job is, uh, she works from home and she works nights. So... I got like I had to be like okay I gotta be asleep before she gets like she comes into the room and goes what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> go to sleep you asshole <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah I, I, I well the, the nap was good because uh, I was beat up yesterday um, feel like physically feeling sore um, yeah. alrighty all right so no, I, I just good now. I just tweeted something there we go. Um, Nobody cares about your tweets. No, well the thing is, ah! I, I, it, it'll show up larger <laughs> if I show the the tweet of Azzy, uh finding his call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's Azzy. No, let's see the video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this one I could stare at for like five minutes. <laughs> it was funny. It was just so much joy. <laughs> this, but it was not only Zildin's joy; it was Mark's joy for that oh, scene. He was so happy. He was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was because it was unexpected, uh, and I, I know that Mark in high school and that sort of thing had like warehouse jobs and stuff. So <laughs> I must have I must have hit the right button. <laughs> May not have been allowed to use the forklift or something, but uh, oh, Matt Gundam guy, thanks for the follow on Twitter. Uh, cool. Yeah. In, the, in uh, real life, his boss are like, "You're not high level enough." Oh, well, yeah. The, yes. Your reflex save is too low. You're likely to crash it. So I was, um, I had a forklift license for a couple of years back when I we, was. We hit the we care boy. about Adam story level yet? Oh, we did. We did because <laughs> I am here and it's what's wow. happening. Wow. Um, <laughs> You're a little surly today. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, he, it, 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 it's it, only earlier, been a really long week. His dinner was Ooh. cookies. Oh, okay. Dinner was cookies. cookies, and now he's grumpy because um, he's an old man who can't digest his cookies. Oh, that's right. right. These cookies are going to be with me for a while. <laughs> In insulin uh, Welcome, anger. boys. <laughs> Here, here's a living room. I'll show you the crapper later. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Marty, I'm Dean Dean from the crapper again. <laughs> no. No. <Flush. laughs> nope. Casting water. <laughs> I don't want our I don't want our viewership to like triple for the wrong reasons. <laughs> 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 They're doing a bathroom show over there and <laughs> die, dragon, die. D and Dookie's over here. D and Duke, all the D's. Oh. He's summoning earth elementals, weird. <laughs> uh, shit elementals. Um, uh, this is a shitty adventure. There's actually a shit elemental in the uh, the dungeon called Rapana Thook. And if you, Do it, kill it, it's like one of those dungeons that's supposed to kill you. But apparently, the the main bad thing that is way beyond your level that you encounter first is a like shit elemental. So yeah, an Odiug? No, like no, like an elemental made of shit. <laughs> kind of, kind of like so... a la Dogma, kind of, kind of shit elemental. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, what did we do last game? Woo! The last two uh, games. Uh, we're called Abyssal Abductions Part 1 and Part 2. This will be Abyssal Abductions Part 3. The first one was called Naked and Afraid. The second one was called, uh, subtitled... Still Fung Naked and Afraid. <laughs> fungal, fungal Diplomacy. Following attempted plane shifts from the Abyss, the party awakens in strange medical tanks aboard a massive alien vessel of unknown origin. The vessel is suspended in air, high above the shattered and pockmarked landscape of Pizunia, the first layer of the Abyss. Easy. Through its tinted windows, a panoramic view of prime worlds that the Abyss has snared and that the abyssal inhabitants are consuming can be seen. They begin to explore the ship. Part two, the party explores the strange vessel and encounters two ambivalent founders of the Order of Paradox. One encounter turns violent, while the other has them questioning about their faith, their very nature, and ultimately, their fate. Dun, dun, dun. They had mind control farts. We had to kill them. There was, they were farting mind control. They, they, they had to die. <laughs> Not Although I watch. made no decisions because I got mind controlled by the farts, so I have no responsibility <laughs> for what happened there. <laughs> I killed the forklift. That's what I did. Oh, so, so, so is that me, why man. you sleep well a, at night? Is a, that what you're just like? Ah, I didn't. I didn't uh, do anything wrong again. I can just sleep like a baby. Uh, <laughs> yes. don't, don't look at me, dude. I had a uh, foot lock. Dude, dude. If you want to talk about disrupted sleep patterns, it's when you fucked up, and I know I fucked up, and I fucked it up, and then somebody else pays for my fuck up. Ooh, ooh, I don't feel good. Oh, I have like a either a strong moral core or I'm a big puss. One of the two. There's something in there. Ooh, my mistakes, my mistakes. Oh, when you fuck up a game <laughs> and somebody else gets there's yeah, and it's like, it's like you, you you fucked up and somebody else dies or gets screwed over or you know that sort of thing. That bugs me. Like, I don't like it. Like putting up a force wall in front of a. No, no, you barrier. deserved it. You were warned. That, uh... You were warned. <laughs> Nobody kills my brother. So, you, you, oh, wizard. Okay, so the situation, <laughs> that, die the, situation my hands. <laughs> the situation that you're in right now is that you're in Skybridge B of the massive <laughs> orb-like ship. Um, there are continuous and uh, periodic sort of updates from this female voice that comes over, this a disembodied female voice that explains how things are going wrong with things that you don't quite understand. Doubt. The lighting of of the sky bridge has shifted to like a darker lighting with a slight kind of pulsing red light that seems to emanate it, from everywhere. It's sense probably mode a good of thing. DC sense mode of DC tens will reveal that something bad is happening and there's a massive alarm spell going off uh, for those that cast spells. Um, on Skybridge B, there is the mangled body of a myconoid by the name of Kaigon Uvid, one of the founders of the Order of Paradox. And through tank windows, you are talking to this massive creature. I don't think it's actually told you its name. Um, but you know that it is ancient and has plumbed the secrets of faith and of the gods themselves. The way it speaks... It's as if he's experimented with faith and has this greater understanding of the gods, so much so that he just considers them other beings. Yeah. And my nose is running for some reason. I will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> he better catch his nose. That, that took a while to get out. Crap, I just got <laughs> over a cold. What the fuck? <sighs> Cast plague on the DM. Curse you. <laughs> Curse okay. You. Um, and his last <laughs> words Bob. were when he was <laughs> describing <laughs> that in the Any Shrine, which some of you took a glance into, it flicks between the quintessential and uh, typical or atypical shrine or, or church of every religion that he has studied. Uh, which may be numbers in the thousands, at least that's what he claims, and that currently the gods themselves don't know that you exist, which may present interesting opportunities to pick new gods or to... Well, we'll get to that. I believe Midwick began to ask... I believe you posed a really interesting question right at the end of the, uh, the conversation with Natanika. 
yeah, it was a co- it was a concept of <clears throat> Fenny being if these are just regular beings that figured things out, where and how do I figure these things out? That was a smart one in the group. The the one that doesn't. I open the door. The <laughs> door one, was the, closed. I open. The one that doesn't <laughs> cast spells, mind you. There are many ways to become a deity, many paths to divinity, divine blood, a cult of personality, diablery or consumption, spontaneous apotheosis, divine heritage, divine investiture. Outsider transformation and one of the ways I have already mentioned, martyrdom and divine theft. A little bit of bubbles come out of them. How, if you were martyred, then you die, so then you how does that make you a god? Because you'd be dead. Not all things here are guaranteed. Martyrdom could be classified as another path of cult of personality. But sometimes there are those that even long after your death will begin to sing your praises. And your spirit, wherever it may reside, could rise up. Belief, faith, is a currency. I get it. If you are really great, you don't put faith in God. God puts faith in you. He's talking about people. People put faith in you. Creatures that think. Divine investiture or inheritance is a possibility for those who are great. Do you think that you are great? Showed your door that I was great. B2 Mark 2A, I believe, is your designation. I should speak louder than words. Your actions designate whether you're great or not. I don't think greatness is earned. I'm sorry, I don't think greatness... I think greatness is earned. Is it? Is the game fair? That's how it should be, in my opinion. We're only a small number of beings in the multiverse could ever attain godhood. Mm. Is that not the definition of pyramid? Why do you not obtain godhood? I have seen beyond it. And I know that it is a dead end. A dead end in the pursuit of what end? The pursuit of being. So you are a philosopher? Amongst other things. What better question? than the answer that billions give to the hard questions. Why am I here? Why do things die? Where do I go? Those are the beginning questions. But as you pull back the layers, more answers reveal more questions. And even beyond the gods themselves, there are things that they cannot comprehend. Those are their threats. And they've done a poor job at protecting the multiverse. 
us against them. But we know the first few steps. You die, your soul goes to a, a plane that is ruled by a god that soul interacts with the plane, um, joins the said god, and the next question is what happens when that soul Did dies? works in the house. Yes. My computer updated for a half a goddamn hour. Thank you, Microsoft. <laughs> We're now rebooting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I, I keep telling you to stop, so I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Matter of fact, why is there value in this currency is an excellent question. B3 Mark II. Hmm, well, energy. If devotion to a god can be measure it as energy, that the more devotees you have, the more energy you will have. A simple mm. equation, but it will suffice. Go on. Question is, why do you need this energy? What do gods why? do? It can't they... be simple like that, because... Uh, not as many people like asshole as like good guy. So good guy has more people, but asshole has strong energy. But those who are more fanatic towards their god take more drastic action. More and therefore energy provide more energy. Yes. So it depends on how much energy each of them produces. The question that this still is not the your question. equations are interesting starting points for ones that are so young. N nobody like Chaos Lady. Nobody, but Chaos Lady have strong energy. How does she get energy when nobody mm. like Chaos Lady? Oh, you make an assumption. Probably from that the is in error. Deities are not the only great things out there. And deity right. as a classification is a very broad spectrum. There are other things that are older than the gods themselves that can still grant powers, that can still do things to the multiverse itself that are either weeful or woeful to those who dwell in it. So the Queen of Chaos is not a god, but a primordial force. Yes. She predates the deities. She is one of the first beings to come into existence. So who is the first? And when was it? These are the questions of philosophers of my like. Things that can only be speculated. Unless if you would was... risk a conversation with the Queen of Chaos and actually trust what she says, if you even understand the depths of what she communicates, or you could get nonsense. He seems annoyed at this. But how, but is she different than how we started? Is she something that grew from where we were? Or is she something that was... Well, the stories say as... that there was, before anything, there was chaos, and from chaos sprouted order, and then you got light and dark from there in the old stories. Yes. Uh, that is a excellent simplification. Uh, so, if she is actually the, the primordial chaos, then she is first or first in what we can determine if it matters you can consider her first or that of her kind as first creation what caused them to be weak how did they lose if they had everything at the beginning creation is something that was formed from the chaos. 
But it must take up space. A sword, a house, a ship, a brick. These take up space. Space where there is organization now, and no longer chaos and emptiness. As creation expanded, so too did the planes and the primes, and the inner planes themselves, the building blocks of everything. As the planes expanded, some of them infinite, this pushed back the veil. Until now we refer to the things on the outside which used to be everywhere as the outra, as the other, as the things outside of creation. Oh, but do they desire to crack this wonderful oyster, to consume the flesh inside and to hoard its pearls for themselves? He seems to be getting excited. Is he getting excited? Yes. Okay. These, Maybe we should stop ultra... agitating the big thing. <laughs> <laughs> these uh, these ultra there, so they're as old as creation itself. They were here before creation, right? Yes, but creation has taught them a few things. And when creation collides with chaos, new ways of being come into place. And this is one of the things that they crave. Same as the gods, these things can consume souls and worlds and matter and energy. They will remake it in their horrible, ineffable forms. They will transform things such that existing will be pain and pleasure and infathomable. It will not be a pleasant end for those who are around when they inevitably win. Your little godling, Tear. Your little godling tear has gone missing, hasn't he? That's right. Tear has gone missing. He tried in vain to get the gods to follow a single banner. Do you know where his foolish cru crusade sent him? Your tr yeah. Oh, what pleasures and pains he must be experiencing now. You said missing, not destroyed. He, for all intents and purposes, is gone. And so the gods, what do they do <clears throat> as the multiverse shrinks? They fight over who will get the diminishing resources. They are going extinct. Is this the first time this happens or not? Or is it the first time it happens to this scale? There For example, why too, aren't you worried? There are too many assumptions built into your questioning, little one. My, 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 question, my, my question does lead to an answer from, from assumptions that I'm observing. For example, you're not very worried because you're not taking any actions. Perhaps you've assumed, uh, assumed your fate or you know things that, for, for instance, this is, you've experienced this not as the first time and you've survived it before. You, you have been alive for but one tick of a day, A2 Mach 2. Do not presume to lecture me about linear time. I think I angered him. <laughs> I didn't mean to, it's just... This is a lot of information. Yes. Why and it do you really think affects... I am willing to share it with you? If 
if you think I am doing nothing. We have to start your lessons somewhere. Unless our... And he waves a tentacle, <laughs> waving over the body of Kaigon Uvid. Unless our master biologist didn't quite get you right, then I will have to have this conversation again. He looks a little disappointed. Are we supposed to work for you guys? Looks that way. Yeah. If you want to talk about negotiating or deals, you should find the little gnome. He is around here somewhere, scheming and plotting as he does. He is our voice. It probably has a name like Bob and therefore it doesn't reveal it. What is your name? <laughs> Bob. <laughs> My friends call me Robert. <laughs> a second. Um, well, listen. I'm appreciating this, really I am, but from these bright, annoying red lights, I'm getting the sense of urgency. Yes. I don't know how much time we've got left, and I do want to converse with you, but I want to get to the weapons room and get and make sure this place stays alive, because I don't want to die. You help us. You have what you need. And I have already agreed to help you find your deities anew. He waves a tentacle and like the malfunctioning now broken door is kind of sparking as it's trying to open again. He twitches in annoyance at kind of like an there, ochre's direction. There seems to be an ochre. There seems to be an ochre. <laughs> as this door is, is all fucked up. And broken. PG, how's it going? They're talking to a big squid, Yo, squid boy about the nature of gods. <clears throat> and yet you still stand here to bask in my tentacular wisdom. <laughs> you just wanted to say tentacular. Uh, All right. <laughs> you guys I, called him Bob. You've been waiting to see <laughs> that. <Touché. one. laughs> Of course you are. Oh, <laughs> it's like, uh, to be expected. Uh, <laughs> Par for course. Do you keep your wisdom in your tentacles? The wisdom, similar... Wisdom comes through pain, little elf. And experience. Well, yes. I'm not a big fan of pain, to be perfectly honest. Then I suggest that you choose the right god. And do not displease them. They are a fickle lot. Do not worry. PG, thanks for the host. Woo! Um, do not worry. One of my prized possessions is the altar of true faith. Anyone who speaks any word before the altar, the gods themselves will consider it as a true believer. Uh, that sounds like a bunch of hokey dokey balokey. Donovan doesn't like that concept. Oh man, I was reading. I was reading the chat. What? What was the concept? <laughs> it sounds important. <laughs> Uh, Donovan's gonna roll. Who wants to be a god in any ways? Are you constrained by worshippers? What if you do something not according to perception? Then, of you? Yeah, as soon as I finish that, all Adam... creation or one squid boy. <laughs> as, as soon as I read that, squid boy. All I hear is my Adam money's on saying, squid boy. <laughs> all I hear is Adam saying, "Oh, I'd mar Adam, no, <laughs> what's his name? Doesn't like that." Uh, Donovan gets a fifty-two Don on his bluff like check that. to not obviously look appalled at the concept of the lying chair of gods can't tell the difference. Um. <laughs> he's telling you don't be afraid because he's yeah he, he's cheated the system 
I found he's got, a loophole in he's the got hacks. We're going to <laughs> run this on your phone. He's yeah. ex he's um, excited at revealing this to you, and and he's like glancing to see if any of you are smart enough to react. Um, so Lo Locric goes like Locric does a like a clicking noise of disdain. <laughs> what exactly did he just say? That's what I want to know because I missed that. <laughs> he said, "Don't worry." Um, the altar of true faith will make it so that any oath or words said upon it, the gods themselves will believe as uh, coming from a true believer. All right, so we cheat. <laughs> Isn't that what they deserve? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Good day to you, Mr. Large. Do you have a name, Mr. Big Squid? Gyro stabilizers malfunctioning, and you notice that uh, the, Donovan, the, Donovan's grabbing the wall because last yeah. time this happened, he had a, like you, know, you notice that the orb is now orbiting, like it, like the the landscape is is going by, like the orb's orbiting, and it's also like leaning slightly towards uh, uh, the far side. Like there, there's a slant now, and there's actual gravity. <laughs> so the slant, uh, I will draw down uh, on the orb. We've gotta currently. get going, guys! Come on. Down is this way. I don't want to be fighting upside friggin' down. Uh... All right, we. And there was Need a distant. Th there was a distant like explosion sound, um, kind of from the inside of the orb, um, that and maybe a flash from the outside, like like you could see parts of um, parts of the internal structure. There is like a tower that goes all the way up to the top of the orb and all the way down to the bottom of the orb that you can see when you're when you're against some of the windows. Uh, in particular, on the outside here, you could see into the orb. Uh, this hallway uh, has a lot of a lot of walls and. Uh, um, okay, Uker's gonna sort of on his way by. He's gonna pick up Lemmy and kay. take him to the shrine place. <laughs> here you go. All right. Um, you you <laughs> look into the shrine. Uh, you, 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 you catch it. You catch it. Kind of turning from a place that looked like it was all on fire, with like bubbling pools of lava and salamander kind of motifs, and it just changed from that to uh, to something that looks like it's um, like crystal nodes everywhere, and trapped inside one of the crystal nodes is this little tiny like fairy, and she seems to be in this this pose like this, little gossamer wings coming out of her back. And that knowledge. seems to be the altar of this place. What 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 is this fairy thing? Yeah, give me a knowledge uh, religion, I guess. Knowledge WTF mate. Yep. Um. All right. Uker can knowledge religion. Without his circlet of knowledge religion, I put a rank. Uh, one rank. Twelve. It is the fairy princess of... A bunch of weird crystals and a fairy, <laughs> and this is supposed to be a temple? You're not... You're And there's this weird, like, um, half egg as, a, as like, an altar. Like, it's open, and and there are, like, two crystalline hands holding on to the egg. You are you are baffled as to what 21. this religion has to do. Uh, Lemio, 21. Give me a knowledge nature as well, Lemmy. Oh, sure. Whoop. Uh, twenty one. A lot of fey religion is weird. In fact, the f so you've you've heard about some fairies, um, and you really liked this chapter when you were going through religious training because it basically said fairies make up gods for almost everything they encounter, um, like the god of untied shoelaces and the god of uh, of <laughs> of like uh, um, I don't know a. Uh, a hole in the screen of the bug door, you know, like that sort of thing. So it was really easy to pass that part of the test to make up some fairy gods. Now, they do have major fey powers that act as deities. Um, 
you're not too sure which deity this is with a roll of 21, uh, but with a combined roll of 21, both knowledge nature and knowledge fey, you understand that fairies or certain types of them can undergo a metamorphosis. Um, they can basically go from a lesser form of fey and turn into different types of fey. And this goddess might be one who promotes this trans, this cocooning and transmortation, uh, transformation. It's a fey god. Just... There is a circle Max... that is on the floor that doesn't seem to change with each of these things. It's like you just go inside and it's on the other side of the door. It's like the floor on the, uh, uh, on the outside here and it looks like there are some runes or lights around the circle. All right. Let me hop down. Okay. Yeah. You stepping into the room? Um, He's being uh, placed into the room by Uker. Okay, you place it into the circle, I we, guess? We, we just spent the last three hours trying to get him a holy symbol. We're flicking him into the room. In you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I do not recognize this place, <laughs> says Mr. Obsolete. <laughs> uh, Lemmy's thinking uh, Paylor. Okay. Um, you notice that... You hear this calm voice, and Uker doesn't hear it, um, but you hear the voice. It seems to be emanating in the air uh, around the uh, uh, the lit up uh, floor or tile, that, the circular tile that you stood on. Mm -hmm. Please pray to the desired deity. Okay, uh, let me starting to make a prayer. Okay. Um, I do not follow Paylor. gods, unless of course you, <laughs> unless of course you you, you are making reference to the maker. The yeah, maker I'm throwing this guy out. For <laughs> <depression>. uh, <laughs> uh, Uker, uh, Mr. Obsolete gets tossed out by Lemmy. <laughs> I'll catch. I'll catch him. <laughs> yeah, Duke. <laughs> Um, the makers have slated Mr. Obsolete for deprecation, so he's not too sure. Okay. Lemio, what do you say? Um, Paylor, I need to get... a sec. Alright. I'm trying to get Paylor's... thing. Um, Donovan is making his way down there. I can't find friggin' Paylor in our thing. What do you mean? Paylor. Gods. No, I want to get his, um... Parlor, you ace. Uh, you, use your use your words. I wanna God get, damn it! I want to. I want to get. Uh, I want to get uh, like Paylor's bill description. His, uh, like what he stands for. Um, we'll get Donovan's sheet. Well, that would make it a lot easier. Why is that fucking earlier? I didn't ask. All right. Um. <laughs> Dysfunction. <laughs> Okay, um, Paylor. Sun god. Right. God of sun. Um, let the light and the warmth of the sun shine down upon me and grant me your energies and your unpowers to let me fight for what is right and what is lawful. I will be your servant and your tool. Aid me in my battles in my future. May I... May I die gloriously and join you in the eternity of the sun. Recording complete. Translating. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> Paylor, the Sun Father, the Shining One, of the Blessed Fields of Elysium, ruler of the Bright City,
God of sun, light, strength, and healing. First worshipped by the Flan of Flanis, of Orth, Rider of Star Thought, Summoner of Eagles, Destroyer of Evils, known as Saul by the early Oridians. Amongst the Bakluni, he is known as Al Azran, bearer of the legendary cup and talisman of Al Akbar. Don't make Admiral Akbar joke. Don't make Admiral Akbar joke. <laughs> Transmitting prayer now. Uh, I don't know if that's how that's supposed to work. I don't know if he can, if he can hear it. If he can't hear it, then don't worry about it. But if, you can't if you you can't hear anything. I don't know. It's Taylor is unable to take your call right now. We <laughs> <laughs> transmit <to> customer service. <laughs> Welcome to Pelor's Font of the Sun. The room changes to a um, a sandstone room um, with a with a light well that is that is uh, peeking light down through the ceiling, a striking an altar where there is a golden uh, orb that is held up by a chalice. Okay. You can hear a little bit of angel song. There are simple depictions of of almost almost like hieroglyphics, but without all the uh, without all the Egyptian hats, uh, <laughs> of these little people that are kind of marching up towards this temple. And uh, there's this shining sun above the temple itself. There are a few icons and things on the table, including what looks like a uh, a child in a manger, um, and uh, a symbol of Pelor, which would be I believe a sun a with sun. Uh, it's a with sun like, like a dude's a like a dude's face in it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There's a man that appears. Very simple looking man. He's got kind of like a like a like a, a monk's cut. He's in a little bit of armor and he's actually he's actually bowing before the temple or bowing before the altar. Uh, he's got his back to me. Just yeah, he's he's <laughs> he's praying before the god. Now let me create right. a token for him. Uh, I'll go and kneel next to him and listen. Okay, he's speaking and, a language that you he says. that you don't quite understand. It sounds like a simple uh, human language. Pardon my rudeness, friend. It's no rudeness at all. G greetings. A a man of true faith was not expected here, so Pelor sent me his favored servant, Joseph. Um, gr greetings. <laughs> Can call call me A two Mark too. <laughs> That's a curious name, he says. Would you like to pray with me before Pelor's altar? Would you like to I was to hoping to do that. Light? Yes, I I I am a I am a cleric and a druid that has lost and need guidance. There's something quintessential and simple about Josen. It's like he's the epitome of the standard cleric of this religion. And for those with D&D &D knowledge, um, might be the <laughs> archetypal cleric of like Dungeons and Dragons 3rd edition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you everywhere! <laughs> I'm a true fan, nice to meet you! <laughs> I've been following your work for 15 
fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> For one of okay, true faith, yeah. why are you so troubled? Have you sinned? Uh, I, I don't believe I have, but, um, the God that I followed brings not responses, brings not care. I need something that, I need to be pointed in the ways of how to care for others and to make sure that it's done properly in a lawful way <laughs> not just covered he or nods in care, and care for this look of this look of deep concern on his face but he's nodding then you have come to the right place to lay your sins bare pray with me and I shall guide you through the right rituals so that you may speak directly to Pelor. No, Brother Lemmy, that he has heard your prayers. He knows my name? He Did called you me say Lemmy. your name? No, I said A2 Mark, Mark II. 2 A B something. Oh, that's right. A2 Mark II. <laughs> 314 okay. protocol droid. Okay, so, so yes, you catch him in, in perhaps something that's going on that's not expected. He called you Lemmy. Lemmy, I like that. Am I right? <laughs> he knows it's the body's name, but it knows it's not the same body, so he doesn't know if he should take the same name. Notanica <laughs> seems to have drifted back a little bit and might be concentrating what's going on in the other room. Like, he, he's not as conversational as he was. He might be spying on what's going on. The voyeur of fate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> dirty. Well, what do you expect? He's a dirty, dirty squid man. <laughs> what are you doing in there, robed one? Paylor, um, I know, will be most pleased with having one such as you amongst the faithful. I know I that this is best. not the first time that he has met you. True. Paylor directly helped <laughs> us. Well, welcome, <laughs> frozen gnomes. I hope that you found a cold place where you can relax, where yard work isn't happening, and no mowing. <laughs> Unless it's mowing <laughs> down of enemies on my uh, <laughs> with their new space guns. Uh, <laughs> we have to find the space guns right now. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, Frozen. Good to see you. It looks like, let's go get the guns! <laughs> I'm sure Vince's going to become a Kalidran rifleman. Fuck this! <laughs> pray pray with me, and pay law shall answer. Listen to the words of atonement, and you will know what you need to do. Right. Is there an extra uh, holy symbol somewhere that I could probably grab? <laughs> yeah, there is a holy symbol, kind of like a golden holy symbol of a face. It's on a little uh, a little um, um, holder beside beside the chalice with the glowing orb, and then uh, to the left of that is a little depiction of a manger with this golden child in the center of it. Yep. Uh, there's also a book off to the side. Uh, given that you've spent time in a magnificent mansion recently or you think recently. Um, just let that linger for a moment. Um, <laughs> Heat stroke? It's minus something right here. What's you wrong? know <laughs> the name of the holy book, and it is called... Okay. Uh, come on, internet. <laughs> scooby dooby doo <laughs> <laughs> It is the uh, light of Pelor. Of course, it is. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else would it be? <laughs> right. Batteries. <laughs> um, you know that the light of Pelor yeah. is basically Pelor's most common holy book. Um, it begins with Pelor's creation of the sun, and telling how Pelor instructed the first mortals. I ask the cleric. Um, do you mind? I don't have a holy symbol for Paylor. May I? 
when you are done here, when we have spoken and laid our soul bare, you will claim your holy symbol, should Pelor wish it. Of course. Do not fear, Lemio. Pelor knows that you are in danger. All of you are in danger. Right. He's waiting for instructions. He's, he's okay. Yeah. So, he's so gonna, basically, he's there's, 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 there's religious together. stuff. You guys are praying together. You're basically also kind of spending the hour to recover spell. Like, well, I guess that needs to happen after the atonement. So um, there is spell casting, and it and it uh, it looks very peaceful in there, Uker. You weren't expecting a dude to be in there because you didn't see really a dude in any of the other ones. <laughs> There's a guy in there. <laughs> He's holding Lemmy. It's getting weird. <laughs> uh, these doors open. And there's what, what nobody doors? there. The doors at the end of the hallway of Skybridge B towards the command area. How much time has passed, Marty? Mm. There's I nobody there, you say? There's nobody there. Nobody at all. Nobody <laughs> at all. Let's Let's roll initiative. Let's roll initiative, because there's nobody <laughs> at all that's there. Ooh, right. Uh, you you do see, see a a blasted and battered what looks like a big metal door uh, that may not have been breached on the other side of this uh, on the other side of this room. Okay. Uh, and the door is opening is, is staying open for quite some time. <laughs> yep. It's really odd how it's open for so long with right. nobody there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're gonna put down, I don't know, ether gaunts on the initiative sheet. Ah, oh, for fuck's sakes. We're gonna put down little bastards on the sheet. I got I mean, it. looks like, give me a small gun! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, give me a small gun! As, um, they may have realized y you guys are breaching into areas you shouldn't. Or maybe they're just on patrol trying to figure out what happened to their... What happened to our other patrols? <laughs> they might be going to the Arboreum, <laughs> right. Arboreum to find their dudes. Right. All right, so opening up the initiative sheet now. God damn it. Oh, All so, right. so, Marty, the spells I have prepared, I have to re-prepare? You should, you should um, when you got a moment in between combat, you should really pick new domains. You should pick Pelorian domains. Okay. You just switch gods, dude. That's cool. That's cool. I don't think travel domain is one of his domains, though. <laughs> you fucked yourself. <laughs> his domains are. Oh, it is shit. Good healing. <laughs> good healing, strength, sun, and travel. Oh, look at that. He's Let's actually the healing. bestest. Let's do healing and travel. Does he have summoning by any chance? Summoning domain? No, but he is neutral good, so technically he can still have druids. So you don't have to like not have that class anymore. I thought it was funny that, because Lemmy showed up and he's like, I need to law all the things. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with Lemmy? Why is he telling Paylor about how much he is a law boater? That's odd. <laughs> he wants to do it the, the right way in front of the lying altar. <laughs> uh, oh, it's so beautiful. Nothing can go wrong there. Absolutely nothing. This right, can't so... go wrong. Oh no, this... This can okay. go so right as long as I don't die. Don't die! Alright, so I've got red okay. ether gaunts, and I think they've got one of their higher oh, level ether Mark gaunts with them. Mark needs caffeine already. Marky! Altigars, so Altigar is about to attack two guys, right? No. <laughs> yes, he's going to attack Lemmy. <laughs> Uh, no, help me, Pelo. <laughs> Lemmy and Josen. We'll just... <laughs> yeah, smash Pelo, Josen, like, dudes, help me! Angry monkeys with the symbols. <laughs> <laughs> Symbol monkey. Uh, your initiative. Oh, I... unless you're not you're not at all shocked by the doors that opened for a mysteriously long period of time. With nobody Oops. there. Alright, well, there's a surprise. Midwick goes first. 
Well, I can't see shit. <laughs> it's like, where are all these tokens? Uh, what? Why is initiative blown away? What do you mean? My base is zero. Why is your base zero? Because uh, you put a zero in there. Let's see. Or somebody else did. But I'm going to be happy blaming you. You did <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. Okay, what's your thing, you bastard? <sighs> bastard. Um, uh, what is it? Excuse me. <laughs> hey, I bet you there's some invisible dudes by the door. <laughs> Someone casts the invisibility on this bullshit. <laughs> nah, just throw grenades and see if blood splatters on the wall. <laughs> Does would the grenade push the blood back into the into the real, or would the blood be stuck in the ethereal? Actually, I can attack the ethereal. Yes, you can. You just have to see it. All right. So we're gonna give them what color for ethereal? Uh, ethereal. We could go with cyan because nobody has mind blank yet. Okay. Beep. All right, and then we've got Midwick, Isildin, King Althagar, Lowcrick. It looks like Midwick is still a little <gasps> bit damaged. Oh, there's the... I mean that we can't see them, but... Oh, we get the... You know... Midwick's a little bit damaged? Yeah. We got two damage? Oh, we've got rid of the stealth. Uh, the... How long was this process, by the way, Marty? What, what do you mean? An hour? Like having a chat? Yeah, the 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 Paylor chat. Uh, you've 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 had uh, so far um, probably, th if I glance at the clock, thirty minutes of conversation with the um, uh, with Natanica and then with Lemio so far. So yeah. I guess I, I, I'm not, I have, Lemmy's not done yet. I no. have non-lethal damage that is going to that's ticking away, which is the Kay. reason. Yeah, because well, I had you, to take you, a nap. For some reason, might have been because of the farts were so bad that I had to take a nap. So okay, <laughs> well, passing three myself out. And <laughs> one, one and three. Did everyone roll their initiatives? Yeah. Uh, Lemmy can't really do anything. Am I right? Uh, unless Lemmy wants to interrupt um, his um, chat, his chat with Paylor. Well, it, the, the door would have closed, but Uker has broken the, the door. door. <laughs> there would have been privacy. No, uh, we're watching you poop right now. Uh, I'm just going to write Paylor as as an initiative. Um, I'm going to put it at a, a zero, and it's going to roll it, a zero. Um, is, it, is Paylor Jozan, or is Paylor Paylor? I'm just going to write Paylor into the initiative sheet. It, right. it, it goes at zero. No, Tanaka is not doing anything aside from watching. He likes to watch. And um, <laughs> then I'm going to put something called um, agriculture. And I will roll an actual initiative for these guys. Uh, 13 with a 2 modifier. Okay, you guys could reposition yourself up to a move away. Um, Kind of representing where you guys lingered, like where you guys moved after the conversation with Natanica. I'm assuming it's the Midwick and the Azzy and the Altigar, because yeah. Uker is obviously spying on Lemmy, and Donovan is kind of inconspicuously spying on Donovan. Donovan is spying on Uker, yeah, spying on Lemmy. Maybe you guys were <laughs> chatting amongst yourselves. <laughs> uh, Lokrik did come over to Azzy and basically go, um, like, this is just moments before the doors open. What do you make of this? This being that speaks of the gods like they're puppets. <clears throat> it's hard to say. What he says is true. He is of unspeakable age. Could be he's just figured out the trick. 
when you think about it, demon lords and devils, they can grant spells as well.